All right, so today we've got another CNC video. And what I plan to do is add some upgrades to my 3018 CNC router. If you watched the previous video, you'll have seen that I've identified some upgrades that I wanna to make to this machine. I'm not gonna be doing all of them today. I'm just gonna do a few of them. I'm gonna try and break the upgrade process down into a few videos just to make it a bit easier to follow. The upgrades I'll be doing today is adding height to the gantry and also upgrading the spindle motor and adding the new power supply. So let's get straight into it. All right, so this is a completely stock 3018 CNC router. Now there's no upgrades on this whatsoever. The only thing I've added here at the back is a case for the board. Now the board comes with these standoffs as stock and they're really sketchy if you ask me, especially considering the frame is made completely of aluminium and you don't want to take any risks there shorting out the board. So what I'd recommend you do is go and design and print your own file or if you like, I'll put this one up on my website where you can go and download it and you can print that out yourself. Before we go on to do any of the upgrades, I will say that one of the people that inspired me to get this machine and do the upgrades is a guy called Roger Webb. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below. Make sure you go check him out. He makes awesome CNC videos and if you're into stuff like this, you're really going to love his channel. So. Make sure you go subscribe and show him your support. As I said, one of the upgrades I'm gonna be doing is adding height here to the gantry. Now, I bought these two pieces of 2020 aluminum extrusion. These are 300 millimeters each. And all I'll be doing is replacing these pieces here on the side with these ones. So we'll essentially be gaining that little bit of height there. We're gonna actually be gaining around 80 millimeters of height. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough for what I want. As I mentioned in the last video, the reason I wanna add this gantry height is so that I can use much higher quality milling bits that have a larger shank on them. So you can see here, if I were to install this milling bit in here, we've lost here a lot of Z height. Now, the problem with that is you're really limited then in terms of what you can mill. Now, if I increase the height of the overall machine, I'll regain that height here and I'll have the clearance to use these much larger milling bits. And it gives me a lot more flexibility in regard to the tools I can use. The biggest and probably most significant upgrade I'm gonna to make to this is the upgrade to this 300 watt spindle motor. Now the one that's installed is 100 watts and you can tell when it's cutting, you know, it is struggling, it's not quite up to the job. So this one should be an excellent replacement and I've actually got a 3D printed part that's gonna replace this gray block so that we can mount this properly. Given that that spindle motor is so much more powerful, it needs its own dedicated power supply. So I bought this thing off eBay, it's a 360 watt power supply which should be more than enough to supply the 300 watt that the motor requires. This power supply is gonna to have to be mounted somewhere on the back here, or I may put it down here, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna play around with that. I'll probably design some kind of bracket and I'll make those files available as well. The final upgrade I'll require is this stepper motor upgrade. So I'm literally just gonna rip this one out and replace it with this one which should just give us a little bit more torque to lift up that heavy spindle motor. So now what I'm gonna do is just rip this thing apart, get those upgrades installed, and I'll give you a rundown once it's all complete. So the gantry height upgrade is relatively straightforward. So the one I really wanted to concentrate on and document for you was the upgrade of the motor spindle holder and the x-axis disassembly itself. So when you take the x-axis apart, you have to take out the bearings. There's an anti-backlash mechanism in there as well that needs to come out. And once you've got all that out, you can just tap those into the new printed part, relatively easy. I recommend you use a mallet instead of a hammer because you don't want to damage the parts and you could end up bending some of the bearings if you hit them too hard. As soon as everything's been seated into place, you can insert the spindle holder straight back into the x-axis carriage and you can just screw in that threaded rod and you will need to insert smooth rods in as well. It can be quite difficult, but if you're having trouble, you can always tap them in slightly using a hammer, which I did here. As soon as the smooth rods are back in place, you just wanna make sure that there's smooth motion between the rails and the bearings. You don't wanna feel any drag or any kind of friction there. It should be relatively smooth. From here, you can reinstall the Z-axis motor. I had to actually print some brand new standoffs for this one. So you'll see later in the video, those white standoffs have been replaced with black ones. While I had the whole X carriage stripped apart, I took the opportunity to take some measurements and model it up in Fusion 360, ready for when I do some future upgrades. As for the reassembly, you just wanna carefully slide the X carriage back onto the rails. And when you're tightening up these rails, make sure you slide the X carriage from left to right that ensures that the bars are completely parallel and you can have the smoothest motion between them. Okay, so as you can tell, I've installed the gantry upgrade and you can see it's made a huge difference to this machine already. You've got a lot more room to play with down here now. And I've also managed to install the new bracket for the motor 
and I installed that stepper motor which has a little more torque than the previous one just to lift this bigger motor up and down. So just to show you, this motor mounts straight in here. Obviously you clamp it down when you're ready but you can see now that just fits in there and we've got so much more room here to play around with. My primary reason for doing this was so that I could use these higher quality milling bits that tend to have a larger shank on them. Now you can see that if I mount this bit in here, I've got quite a bit of space left at the bottom to play around with as well. Now my Z-axis travel is at its maximum, meaning that it can't cut any lower than this. It can only go up from here. I really like this to be honest because it means that I've got space here to add a spoiler board if I want to and I'm not going to be sacrificing any of my Z travel for that spoiler board which would have been the case with the previous design. So now you've just got so much more room to play with and I've also eliminated an issue as well that I had before with the clamping. So if you remember before when I had these longer bolts to clamp larger blocks of wood there was an issue where when the Y axis moves back the clamps were possibly going to hit the smooth rods on the X axis. That issue now is completely eliminated and it should be a lot more straightforward to cut thicker blocks of wood. Another thing I really want to look into is reinforcing the gantry. So obviously I've added height here which is going to result in slightly more wobble at the top. Only ever so slightly but it's going to be there. So it's important to try and reinforce this as best as I can. The original design did have these little braces that you fit on the sides here. So you go one here and one this side. But I think I'm going to design something myself, something a little bigger, maybe a little sturdier as well. Print it in PETG which would be nice and strong. Overall really happy with the way this is looking at the moment. I've still got a few things to add on, I need to add the threaded rods in. There's a motor on the end here, I need to install all the electronics again. And the final thing I need to do is add the power supply somewhere here on the back. It'll probably be up here. But I might look into doing something on the side as well. It depends how it goes. In order to secure the power supply to the gantry, I printed two of these little brackets that I designed in Fusion 360, and these should serve great in holding the power supply to the frame. As I mentioned earlier, I also wanted to print some gantry reinforcers. These are much bigger and stronger than the ones that came with the stock machine, and they should do an excellent job at minimizing wobble on the gantry. So there we have it. That's the 3018 CNC with the majority of its major upgrades. As I said before, you can already see this is looking like a much more capable machine already. The biggest thing for me, as I said earlier, is this gain in gantry height. It just opens up so many more doors and gives you a lot of flexibility down here in terms of what you can work with. The spindle as well now is going to be more than capable, especially for the majority of woods. And if we compare to the old one, you can really see there the difference. We've got a lot more power, a lot more torque, and overall just a lot more capability. I designed and 3D printed these new braces on the side. So as I mentioned previously, the original design had these shorter ones, which was fine for the lower gantry height. So I printed some bigger ones and it does a really good job. And that's now very sturdy. You can also see that I switched a few things around. So the X axis motor is now on this side as opposed to this side. The reason I did that was so I could put the board on this side and the power supply on this side. It's just more convenient for my setup over on the worktop because my computer's on this side and my plugs are on this side. Just more convenient for me really, and it's definitely not a necessity for the upgrades. There are still a few upgrades that I wanna to do to this machine. As I mentioned before, they are the limit switches, and the final one will be the addition of an extra smooth rod to try and help minimize the movement here. Now if I show you a clip of this side on, you can really see there is still a little bit of movement there, and you don't want that at all for any of your cuts. When you start moving to harder woods, that movement is going to start to show itself on the finish of your final results. The reason that the wobble is happening is because of these smooth rods. So the smooth rods are quite thin. So when there's force applied to the spindle, the weakest thing is going to move first, right? So these smooth rods, they're not very well supported in the middle or, or anywhere actually other than the sides. So what happens is when you apply pressure here, the softest thing on the frame is going to bend first and that would be the smooth rods. There are a few ways you can go about solving that issue. One of those is obviously to add in an additional smooth rod which will be somewhere at the back but I'll see how that goes. I did manage to capture the design of the x-axis part so I can modify that and print my own if necessary. As for now I'm really really pleased with this. I think you'd agree that it looks like a much better machine than it was originally and next thing I'm going to do now is just try and do a few cuts with this new setup, make sure everything's working, make sure all the software's complying properly. And once I'm happy with how it currently is, that's when I'm going to start tackling that problem of eliminating the wobble here. 
just to sort of remind you any files for any of the parts I've used here I will be making available on my website very soon I've got some plans for my website that I think you're all going to be quite excited about so that'll be coming probably in the next month or two so make sure you go sign up check that out and I'll send out a newsletter when I release all the stuff and you can become a website member that's it for this video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one